Hey folks, it's me. I thought I'd make a short video to try to help you out with a couple of problems that a few of you have been telling me you've had. So this video is going to cover three main topics. We're going to go ahead and talk about the three things you've told me you have difficulty. Number one, surface areas. Okay. And number two, word problems. Okay. And number three, statistics. Okay. So we got three things to go. Want to try to get there, at, get through it as quick as possible. So let's go ahead and start. Okay. Now the first problem, surface area. We have a square that is six by nine by four. Now the first thing, the very first thing you must do when you work on these problems, oops, is draw out your box and as you can tell you do not need to be an artist what you do need to do though is try to at least be a little careful so that because if you're really sloppy while you're drawing this you're going to get confused even further this is already hard enough if you've never done this so um, let's uh, let's go ahead and uh, look at this here okay and we've got the bottom here is six this is 9, and the height is 4. And the first thing you really have to remember to do is as soon as you start, you must start, you must convert it into its flattened. Because remember, surface area is the area of the surfaces. This is not a volume. And this is not an area. Okay, it's neither of those two. It is the area of the surfaces. So you need to lay this out just like you were opening up a cereal box. Okay, and the quickest way to do it, if you've never done this, is first get started by lettering your sides six sides because it's a square but if you didn't know this you can just go letter by letter we'll letter the the ones that you can see with green so that's a that's b and that's c and as you can tell there's going to be another one on the opposite side of a on the one on the opposite side of c and one on the other side of b so we will label those in blue so this one here we're going to call this d the opposite side of c and the one on the opposite side of A, we're going to call E. And the one on the bottom, we're going to call F. Okay, simple enough. Now, we're going to lay out our box. Now here, when we lay it out, really, you have a choice of how to do it. There is no single way to do it. Okay, so I'm doing it one way. You can do it in your own way. The point is it should at least look like you can take it apart in that way. So if I do it this way and you do it a different way, like I said, it um, doesn't matter. There's many ways to take it apart. You should know that already, but in case you didn't. Okay, so here we go. Okay. And just to remind ourselves of the dimensions and the letters. Okay, so this is 4. This is 6. This is 4. This is 6. And this is 9. And notice, we're missing a side. So I'm going to put it here, just because it takes up less space. Obviously, this should have dimensions of four. Okay. And this is six. Right? And we give them their letters, so we'll remember. So this here was A. And notice the one above it is B. Okay, and the one beside it is C. Okay, and the one on the complete opposite side of A is B. And 
this one on the underside of B is F, and the one on the other side of C is D. So, hope that makes sense, guys, um, because you really want to keep track of all of this. The first times you got to want to keep track, okay? So this is the underside, that's the top side of that box. Okay, once we've got that, then everything else is actually simple. I mean, look, here we've got, so B is 9 by 6, A is 9 by 4, Let's, uh, let's do them in order just so you won't. We'll go 9 by 6. A is 9 by 4. C is 4 by 6. And it doesn't matter the way you do it. By the way, it's not 6 by 4. 4. You, as you should realize that in multiplication, the order doesn't matter. In some other things, it will. Here, it doesn't. Okay. And D is 4 by 6. E is 4 by 9, and F is 6 by 9, or 9 by 6, as you can tell. You notice how they're connected? You know, B and F are about the same, and there you go, A and E are the same, and C and D should make sense, okay? So, and here we just add them together. Okay, so that's 36. That's 54. 36. Oh, I'm sorry, there were 24. 24, 36, and 54. And then we can just add them together. You know, here's 10, here's 10, that's 20, 28. And then we got 228. So there's that problem. Now let's go to the next one. Next one's interesting, and some of you really, um, this is where you really need to apply your ideas, okay? So this one's a triangle, okay? So let's go ahead and go to that one. So we start by drawing it. First, it's original shape. Always draw the original shape, okay? It's like this, and then it's like this. And here's the important point, okay? Well, let me uh, just fix this a little bit. That just looks ugly. Okay. So we give them their measurements, okay? And first off, okay, since this is a triangle, we want to measure its base, okay, and its height. So this is the height here, okay, and this is 2.6, okay, and the base is 3. Okay, now, notice here, okay, I'm going to give you something a little different here, and that is that here, okay, well, this is just the depth, okay, and the depth is 4, that's easy. The one you may not have been paying attention to, though, was this guy right here. Notice it's not the same as this guy. Okay, this dimension here is 3. Now, if you lay it all out, you're going to notice why that works. But in case you didn't, at least now you know. Um, okay. So, how do we lay this out? Same thing we did before. 
which is first we give them letters. Okay, so we're going to give them letters. We're going to say, now first, how many sides does this have? Well, look, it should be obvious. We have this side and the other side that's on the other side, so that's two. And then there's three sides to this, so it's, this has got five sides. Less than that one that had six. Okay, so that's the first thing we do. Let's go ahead and lay it out. So we lay it out. this. Now, how do we lay out all the other stuff? However you want. I'm going to lay it out like this. Again, excuse my ugly drawing. I mean, you know, like I said, it's, it's not that easy to draw on the, on the tablet, even though supposedly, you know, some people are artists, but it takes a lot of practice. I haven't had that much time to practice. So, There we go. And then there's the other side. And let's remind you what these sides all are. Okay, we're gonna do it like we did. We're gonna use the same strategy as before, which is we're gonna call this A, and we're gonna call this B, and we're gonna paint in blue the sides that you cannot see. So this is C. This is D and the very back side is E. Okay, so once again, this is A. This is B. Okay, and then we have C right here. We have D and E. Don't be lazy. You gotta write. You gotta draw this stuff out exactly like I'm doing here. Okay. If you don't, you're gonna get it wrong. Now remember, here we have, we have this dimension, this dimension, this dimension. We have four different dimensions. You gotta use all of them. So let's go ahead and look at how we're gonna use them. Okay. First of all, for our squares, it's kind of easy. Okay. Look, what is b? B is just three by four. So you can just draw those right here. Um, since they're in green, I'll keep them in green. And if you notice, everything C and D are going to have the same four. Okay, so this is going to be four. Um, actually, well, this is off. Let me correct that. This is actually four. And this is three, yeah, there we go. Sorry about that. Anyway, this is gonna be four because these two are gonna have to match. This is gonna be four, 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 this will be three, and this will be three. That should make perfect sense why they are, okay? If they don't, well, we can talk about it later, but anyway. So, all of these are threes and fours, okay? This is three, and this is three. Your triangles are all, if you didn't notice, your triangle sides, this is the other side is three, and that's three, okay? But here's the problem is, okay, you, now we can figure out D, B, C, and D, but we cannot figure out the area of A with just this. That's where this little number comes in, okay? Remember, Remember, the area of a triangle is one half the base times the height. Okay, and the base is the bottom, the height though. It's the height, remember that the height has to be perfectly straight up and down, and we call that um, perpendicular to the base, okay? These, this height here is not perpendicular to the base. 
you know you should know this but okay let me just go real quick so for a triangle like that when you draw it like that okay and you have the base is three okay and the side is three and the side is three but the height the height is actually measured from here and this it's telling you that this see this is a different dimension and you should notice the difference this is from here to here this is from here to here and this is 2.6 this is the height the height is perpendicular to the base always otherwise it's not a height okay so keep that in mind so with that in mind we can use this okay so let's uh let's measure the area of the triangle then which is a and using what i just told you okay you know that one half and then the base well the base is three and what is the height well the height is not three remember i told you the height is 2.6 it must be perpendicular so that's what we're using this for okay and what is b now b all the the, the others are going to be simple okay b is just three times four what is c once again three times four what is d three times four and what is e well, same as the other one, one half, three times 2.6. Okay. Okay, and this, of course, is 3 times 2.6, that's um, 7.8, and half of that is 3.9, and then we've got 12, 12, 12, oh, 3.9 again. Okay, and that's going to give us 43.8. Okay, so I hope this makes sense, okay? We're going to move on to the other one, just, um, but I wanted to make sure you at least got this, okay? So, let's move on to the next part, which is word problems. We're going to look at problem 11 here. Problem 11 says a construction contractor used the equation 945 equals 1.35 times 7 to calculate how much 7 boxes of nails would cost him. How much would 4 boxes of nails cost him? Okay. So this one's really simple, okay, but just wanted to make sure that you at least got this, okay. So if he's saying if the construction worker use 945 equals 135 times 7, okay, so this is for number 11, and he's writing 945 equals... 135 and 7 to calculate for 7 nails for 7 boxes of nails well quite obviously if we want to figure out for 4 boxes we just use the same logic Okay, and so what 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 should be 
which um, if you even if you didn't know that just look at what are we looking for we're looking for we're told that we're looking for how much the cost would be well the cost of things is always something times something else you know you got a dollar you buy two things that's two times one you buy seven of something that's seven times one you know so once again this is you know the cost and this is the unit, the unit value, and times the number of uh, number of units. So in this case, if we're going to do it for four boxes, easy. Okay, we say one point thirty five is the unit value times four. And what's that going to give us? It's going to give us zero, four, five, five forty. Okay. So let's go ahead now and look at number sixteen. Looks like it's a little more complicated. So a carpenter used a one quarter of a box of nails. Hey, by the way. I'm just showing you and going over to the other problem because I expect you to write down this problem. So don't complain that I'm not just showing it all the time, okay? So please, write down this problem so that once we're working on it, you can work on it yourself. Don't be lazy. This is not TV. This is not your entertainment, okay? So, once again, Carpenter used a quarter box of nails while working on a birdhouse and was able to finish one-ninth of it. At this rate... How many boxes will he need to finish the entire birdhouse? Okay, so let's go ahead and get started on this one. Okay, so it said that the carpenter used one quarter box of nails. So one quarter box of nails. And notice what I'm doing. I'm writing down the things that are important to our calculation here. Okay, and he was able to finish... With one quarter box of nails, he was able to finish one ninth of the birdhouse. Birdhouse. Now, this should be really simple. I mean, if I had to do it another way, I could say, well, think about it this way. Um, I'm going to show you the simplest form of this, which is, what about if we said uh, we had one-third of A is needed to finish one-half of B? You'll see why I'm doing this. Well, if one-third of A, say it's nails, and B is a birdhouse, that's telling you that a third of a box of nails is required to finish a half of a birdhouse. Well, it should be quite obvious. If I want to finish the whole birdhouse, well, let's just multiply whatever we need to turn this into one. So we multiply this by two. But if we do it that, okay, because we remember our focus is we want to turn this into one. Then we have to do it on both sides. Two. And so what's that going to tell us? That's going to tell us that two-thirds of a box of nails will produce two halves, which is one house. Does that make sense? All we're doing is we're looking at so much of this makes so much of that. If we double it, in this case, then we double this. Just like in all equations, right? So, let's go back to this one, okay? If we want to, if we want to find out how much it takes to convert, to, to finish the entire house, well, how many times do we have to do this? Simple. We have to do it nine times. So, we multiply by nine. And what does that give us? It gives us nine fourths
box of nails. leads to nine-ninths of a birdhouse, which is one birdhouse. Now, you could convert this into decimal, okay, and, I mean, I guess, it's 2.25, you know. I don't care if you keep it fraction or decimal. Your teachers, some of them might, especially when you're still in below high school, they might care. Later on, they won't because it actually is not always such a good idea. So pay attention to what your teacher asks you for, though. Okay, so don't just go with what I'm saying. Remember, the golden rule of all classes is the teacher's rules are the rules you need to follow. Whatever I tell you is secondary. If your teacher's wrong, eh, you know, maybe you'll tell them they're wrong. But the more important thing is if your teacher insists on their method, just keep it that way. Just keep in your mind that they're wrong so that you don't keep following their mistakes. That's all. That's what I did. And, you know, I never really learned it a bad way. Because most teachers, though, they're, they're pretty good about understanding. Um, so, anyway. So that's number 16. Let's go ahead and move on to number... Da, 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 da. Here we go. Number 23. So, we're going to look at statistics now. Okay. Once again, you got to write this down. Okay. So, find the mean, median, interquartile range and mean absolute deviation of the set of numbers. If possible, round to the nearest 10. Okay. So, this is simple. So let's start with this simple example. Okay, so first of all, let's start. Our numbers. So we have 8, 2, 2, 2, Okay, and so our mean, remember what the mean is. Mean is just the average. As far as you're concerned, they're exactly the same mean. This is only going to change once you're in college. So for your terms, whenever you hear mean, always remember it just means the average. Okay, so what do you do for the mean? You already know. Okay, so that's, you just add them all and divide them by the number. So that's 8 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2. Okay, divided by 2, 4, 5. Okay, and that's going to give us 16 over 5. And that's going to be about 2, 3.2. Okay. So that's the mean. The median. Well, the median is just the middle number. You have to lay out your numbers now in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in their numerical, in their ordinal order from lowest to highest. So that's 2, 2, 2, 2, 8, and find the exact middle number. This is the important point about the median. Okay, so you have to look, you have to have equal numbers above and below it. Well, that's this number right here. This is easy enough, because you've got 2 below it and 2 above it. So the middle number is the median. So easy enough, the median is 2. Now, the interquartile range, I, Q, R. Well, the interquartile range is a combination of the first quartile and the third quartile. Now, remember what quartiles are. They're the division of the median into four. So we're just going to apply exactly the same idea, but in four directions. So here's what I mean. Your median is your your um, your, your middle quartile, or it's middle. That's not the right term, but it's your mid. It's it's the middle. Your quartile then is going to be your number that is between okay these. Okay, so.
so let me lay this out just to make it a little clearer, okay? So we've got two, 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 and eight. Okay, we divide our first quartile, our first, um, we divide our numbers in half this way. Okay, and when we do, though, we no longer pay attention to this guy. So now we look, we have two numbers here, okay? To divide them in half, we'd actually have to find a number right between them. Now here's the, the reason I'm giving you this, because we don't have a number between them. If we don't, then we get the average of them. So this one, the, this is two. What's the average of these? Well, this one's easy. That's two, because there's no difference. What about this one? Well, this is five. So notice what I showed you, okay? When we, every time that we divide into quartiles, and we can also divide, by the way, we can go into octiles or octants or whatever the name would be by doing exactly the same idea. We split them in half. So every time we keep splitting them in half, where would you have to split it to split it perfectly in half? If you hit the number like here, okay, then you use that number. But if you're splitting between two numbers, then you get the average of those two. And in this case, we had to split between those two, okay? So that should tell you then that our 25th, and this is what we call then our first quartile, our 1Q. This is actually called our 2Q, our second quartile. And this is called our 3Q, our third quartile, okay? So our range, our interquartile range is the range between the first and the third quartiles, okay? So what is that? Well, now that we've broken it down, and if you are if you took the time, you'll notice, well, that's just the difference between five and two, okay? So five minus two equals three, okay? So there's that one. Now, finally, the mean absolute deviation. So the MAD, this is the one that you may actually think is the most dumb of the numbers, but it's actually the one that's going to be used the most later on. Later on, as a matter of fact, this is going to later on turn into what we call the standard deviation in statistics. And the standard deviation is an important measure of how your numbers are spreading around how the numbers are going, moving around. You really need this number to know how accurate your measurements are. You're gonna be using this number in science. So this is the number that I really want you to pay the most attention to, okay? And really, it's not that hard if you keep track of it. That's why I'm already giving it to you folks already, okay? Many people don't see it, won't see it, and then they're gonna be suffering later on when we talk about the standard deviation. From here, of course, we, also, we have the variance, this is what I'm telling you, there's a lot. We have the variance and then we have the sum of the squares. And from some of the squares, we'll go to concepts such as ANOVA, regression. You won't see this for a while, but I'm just showing you that this concept here has a lot of stuff that you're gonna build on later on. So you want to understand it. Okay, so the way that you find the mean absolute deviation Okay, it's simple. Number one, you find the mean. Well, you already have it. Okay, what did we say the mean is? Okay, we said the mean is 3.2. Okay, now the, the mean of the deviations. So this is the mean of the deviations. Okay, we have to find the deviations of every number. So the MAD is the deviate is the mean. The, it, it means the average we can call it the average deviations. That may be an easier way to understand it. So we're gonna do it. So first off, we need the mean, and we already said that's 3.2. Now we have to find the average, uh, the, the deviations from the mean, okay? So we have, how do we do that? Well, we get the the, the and, and we call it absolute, by the way, because we get the absolute value. So we have our numbers here. We have 8, 
we have 2, 2, 2, and 2, right? Now we have to find the absolute deviations of each one. So we say minus 3.2 because it's the deviations from the mean. Remember, we care because this is going to tell us how far each of these numbers is from that average or from that mean. Minus 3.2. And we have to write the little absolute bars here. And now we just add them all together. And we're going to do, when, since we're saying the mean, we're saying M A D equals the sum of all these deviations. Okay, so we're saying 4.8 plus 1.2 plus 1.2 plus 1.2 plus 1.2. That's going to be 9.6 over 5. Because that's 4.8 and that's 12, 24, 36, 48, 4.8 and 4.8 is 9.6. Over 5, okay, is going to give us 1.9. So, Yeah, 1.92. Okay, so this number here, like I said, what this number is actually telling us is it's more or less telling us how far these numbers are on average from this middle point, which is uh, 3.2. Okay, later on, we're going to see this in different ways. So even if you don't totally understand it, this is why you at least have to do the exercises. See, here's the point of doing this, okay? And that is that the more that you do it, the more you will start to understand the concept. Every, I can tell you this until I'm blue in the face. It doesn't matter. You're not going to get it. You have to do the exercises. So do the exercises, okay? And like I said, this is probably this one of the most important concepts that you will later have to really master, especially once we start talking about things that are a little more scientific. Okay, so let's move on to number 24. Okay, find the mean, median, interquartile range, and mean absolute deviation of this set of numbers. If possible, round to the nearest 10. Okay, so 97763. Okay, so we have 97763. Well, first off, the first thing I like to do is put them in order. So we have 3. Six, seven, seven, nine. Okay, and so what's the mean? Uh, let's go. So let's. Uh, so three and six is nine, and nine plus fourteen plus nine over five. Well, that's eighteen. Eighteen and fourteen. Okay. 32 over 5, that's um, 6.4. So this is the mean. Remember, we're going to need it later on. Okay. And then we have the median. And the median is just the number in the middle. That's the simplest one to solve. 
So the median is 7. We already figured the IQR. We have to split our numbers once and then split them again. And as we notice, since here we can only split between these two, then our, uh, this number here, what is that? Well, that's just 9, that's 4.5. And this is 16, so that's 8. And then the range between that is 3.5. Okay, and then the mean absolute deviation, which is the one that takes a little more work. Let's go ahead and do that. First off, we write the number, absolute values, and then we say um, 3 minus 3.5 absolute, 6 minus 3.5 absolute, 7 minus 3.5 absolute 7 minus 3.5 absolute and then mine minus 3.5 absolute okay, so we know that this is 0 0.5 and notice it's not negative because we said absolute okay so 2.5, 3.5, and 5.5. And so now we have to average these. So we say 0 0.5 plus 2.5 plus 3.5 plus 3.5 plus 5.5. All of this over 5. Okay. And so what's that? Well, that's, that's 3. That's 7. So that's 15.5 over 5. And so, what's this going to give us? Well, that's just going to MAD is going to be 3.1. And so, there you have it our mean, our median, our interquartile range, and our mean absolute deviation. Now notice we spent a while going through everything step by step, so I hope you will take the time and you have done this on pencil to make it worth my while that I went through all of this with you, okay? So if you got any questions, let me know, but do this on pencil and paper and do the problems that I've just put on this uh, along with this um, video and let's see how you do, okay? Okay, take care.